Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you. Such a treat to welcome our guests today. We've got Chris and Kim Kenny from the McKinley Museum. And hi, morning to both of you. Hi. Hello. Thanks for having us. Okay. Um, Chris, let's start with you. You uh, have a new book out. Let's, let's dig right in. Tell sure. us a little bit about it. Uh, it's called The McKinley Years, The Life and Times of Our 25th President. And uh, it's uh, we thought it would be a nice idea to have a new McKinley book uh, for the museum. And, of course, with mm-hmm. it being an election year, this is a, a great time to, to have it come out. And uh, it uh, I'm really happy with how it came out. It's a intermixes his personal life uh, with his professional life mm-hmm. and all the different things he was going through uh, throughout his life. So it's a, a little bit different look at William McKinley than some of the more recent books. Right. And not your first time writing about any of this, certainly. So did you learn anything new? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I learned quite a bit new, uh, a lot of um, primary source material. Uh, We tried to put a lot of things in McKinley's own words um, Mm -hmm. in the book. So we have some uh, um, words from his Civil War diary. Uh, so reading through that, you get a very good idea of kind of what he was thinking and uh, as he was a young 18-year-old out on the, the battlefield. And uh, then some personal letters between uh, he and Ida, mm-hmm. uh, which gives some insight into their relationship. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of neat things in that respect. They were an amazing couple, weren't they? They went through the hardest of times and the best of times together. Can you touch on that a little bit? Uh, Sure. Uh, You know, he was um, a person just like the rest of us. And I think we forget even today, uh, our politicians and and public figures, we forget that there's a private side. Mm -hmm. Uh, So in the book, I try and, you know, touch upon the the personal life. And he went through uh, losing two daughters. Those were the only two children that they had. And they lost both of them at a very, very young age. He went through financial difficulties uh, during his time as governor. Uh, He took care of Ida, who had uh, what we would diagnose today as epilepsy. Mm -hmm. And she was very, very sick from uh, the time that the two daughters passed away, uh, really the rest of their life. Do they think that might have triggered it? Uh, there's some thoughts that that perhaps the death of the two children and the losing her mother and grandfather and oh uh, around that same period uh, could have triggered that uh, definitely. But uh, but it it was tough in those days. The doctors uh, didn't have the medical knowledge that we do today, and mm-hmm. oftentimes what they tried to do to help the situation made it worse sometimes. So he was very very devoted to her, and uh, that really. Um, made some impacts upon what type of campaigning he did and and his politics. Isn't it wonderful that the technology we have today, though, didn't exist then because now we have these letters. They weren't just texting one another. Exactly. Exactly. We can we can see his own words to her. And uh, it's very very formal. Uh, this was the end of the Victorian period, so even writing between the husband and wife uh, still has a certain formality to it. He signs his letters, you know, your loving husband, William McKinley. Uh, so there's still, there's still that, right, still that Victorian era formality to it, even between husband and wife. Wow. Well, any surprises that you've come across uh, this time around? No, I, I don't think, not any surprises, mm-hmm. uh, really. Um, maybe a little bit about his his sense of humor uh, came oh. out, a little bit of a very dry sense of humor uh, came out of doing some research uh, for this. So that's something we don't necessarily equate William McKinley with when we see pictures and things like that. Uh, but he did have a, a very dry sense of humor. Well, I'm, I'm sure you don't sign anything to your lovely wife here, <laughs> Chris Kenny. No, but, no uh, not at all. But Kim Kenny also joins us. And uh, Good morning, Kim. Good morning. And uh, your role at the McKinley Museum is? I am the curator. So I'm in charge of all of the exhibits on the history floor and also the collection. 
And we are still to this day finding new things owned by the McKinleys that family members or friends come up with and say, hey, you might want this. That is true. It happens less and less often. Uh, more often we get people with a family story that doesn't have a provenance with it and they want us to prove it, which is very difficult. Oh, right. Uh, we don't have an itemized list of everything the president owned and his probate record is, I like to call it delightfully vague um, <laughs> because it'll just say chair and you're like well was it an upholstered chair was it a rocking chair you know and so it's not helpful so it's kind of a needle in the haystack to prove but just last year we got a chair that belonged to the president and the family just said you know we we know that this is his chair we don't have any proof of that but we think you have a picture in your collection of him sitting in it and we actually did so oh, wow. <laughs> that's the best evidence and really the only 100 percent evidence that we can provide people when they don't have that paper trail. So that's on exhibit outside the McKinley Gallery now with the picture of him sitting in it. So many fun stories locally about him. We recently had someone from the um, Maslin Women's Club here and how the, one of their daughter's weddings had to be postponed for a few mm-hmm. hours until he got there right. mm-hmm. because he was kind of an important guest. And <laughs> <laughs> kind of. So, yeah. <laughs> President's coming to your wedding. You want to wait for him. <laughs> it doesn't happen every day. No. The other thing that comes to mind recently that you both were involved with, I think, is a Pawn Stars episode. Yes. What was that about? Yeah, we um we were able to acquire Ida's Diamond Tiara, which we actually saw like the rest of America on TV. And so you just <laughs> saw it there, and yeah. you were sitting yeah. there yeah. watching TV and yes. said, "Oh my gosh!" We had a heads up earlier in the day from. Um, Doug Bennett, who designed our website, um, and he said, you might want to watch. I saw a preview. I don't know what it's about. And we saw the tiara on on the show, and we had borrowed it a few times from the family. And so I actually called Las Vegas and was told it wasn't for sale. And um, oh, speaking yeah. of regular letters, heart uh, sunk. yeah, I Absolutely. was like, well, at least mm. we know where it is. So I, I thought, well, let me send an old fashioned letter on letterhead and just let Rick Harrison know if he changes his mind, if it does become for sale, we would be interested. And he called me within three days. Yes. Let me get this straight. It, somebody, somebody in this area, a family member mm-hmm. owned this tier and decided to pawn it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around that a little bit. Okay, so then, all right, yeah. they decide to do it on national television yes. and get yes. top dollar, and uh, Rick Harrison contacts you. Now, mm-hmm. what's he like? He's he's like he is on the show. Yeah. I mean, he's very funny and down yeah. to earth. Um, I'm pretty sure it was his cell phone that he gave me because when I called back, he, he left me a voicemail because I was in staff meeting. Wow. And um, when I called back, he just answered it, hello. And it, it, wow, and a shrewd negotiator, I'm guessing. Um, he told me he would sell it to us for what he paid for it, which was $43,000, except for we had $0. So <laughs> we had to start fundraising. And if it hadn't been on television, you know, if it had been sold, you know, locally in an estate sale, we needed that extra exposure to get people yeah. excited about it. So if it hadn't yeah. been on TV, I don't think we could have raised the money for it. And actually, we raised more than 43000 People who knew we were already done still sent in their money, and we were able to buy the case for it. And then uh-huh. anything that was left over, we put towards the Ida McKinley Dress Conservation Project. And so. you actually found photos of her wearing this tear? Yes, we have a photo in our collection of her wearing it. It's displayed in the McKinley Gallery next to the tiara itself, and it's really unusual. It's not like Miss America crown or something like that. It's just too... Uh, feathers. They look like wings and they're completely encrusted in diamonds. It's just Mm. beautiful. (laughs) Oh my goodness. All right. Well, nice of him to not make a profit on it, but to be willing to sell it for exactly what he got for it and break even. And he actually donated the money that we gave him to buy it to the Epilepsy Foundation. So yeah, it was win, win, win for everybody. Oh, that really (laughs) is. Well, then you went around. How did you start raising $43,000? I mean, everybody was excited because they had seen it on TV. We all wanted to get it back. Mm-hmm. Well, I think for this, it was the positive power of social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were mm-hmm. able to get get the word out. And as Kim said, if it hadn't have been on TV, uh, I don't think we would have been able to accomplish what we did uh, because people all over the United States saw it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we were able to get that word out there. And um there were local articles done. The repository did an article about it. The AP picked that up and it went out on the wire. So it really got all across the country because of that connection to a very well-known um, national 
TV program. Right. Uh, and then it just sort of snowballed from there. But one of the things we're most proud of at the museum is we had uh, small fundraisers here and there, but we did everything uh, true to the mission of the museum. Uh, we tried to keep everything true to what we do at the museum rather than going, you know, out on something some sort of tangent yes. that didn't relate back to the museum. Now, you were aware that this existed prior to that being on Pawn Stars? Yes. You, you knew that this existed mm-hmm. somewhere. We had, I've been there 15 years, and we had borrowed it twice in the past, so we had seen it before. Are there other things out there somewhere that you're hoping to get? The holy grail for us is Ida's wedding dress. There's not even a photograph of it, um, which is very unusual. And the the write-up in the repository is very brief, and it doesn't. It sort of says, "I will leave it to others to describe the dress better than I could." And so there's not too much information. Although she did apparently wear it at her 25th wedding anniversary, and that article has a little bit more. But nobody's ever seen it. No one knows what happened to it. And we would love it to be in someone's attic somewhere. (laughs) What is the dress that's at the hotel downtown? It looks like a wedding gown. Was that an inaugural dress? That belongs to the First Lady's Library. Okay. So that's not one of our dresses, so I'm not sure exactly what it is. I always thought it was a wedding gown. No. Must not be. (laughs) Okay, so we don't even know what it looked like no it's in somebody's attic somebody somewhere has it somebody, oh my goodness <laughs> and they hopefully know that they have it I maybe they, they don't know, know. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness yes well i hate to tell you we had something he had given to my grandmother my sister took it to show and tell and never came home with it so oh, there you oh go no. there's another thing out there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> so, who knows where that Yikes. ended up but um yeah i think there's just so many mckinley stories when you are a local person mm-hmm. there's a tie exactly. absolutely mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And most of what we get are commemorative things or campaign things, and those still come in regularly. But it's that personal property of William or Ida that gets us really excited. And yeah. it's pretty rare, yeah. but it does happen. Yeah. And because their two daughters died and they were the only children they had, they were very, very young, there's no direct descendants. So there's no right. direct family line. Uh, so, you know, a lot of things were sold at a house sale after Ida passed away or it came down through uh, Ida's side of the family. So mm-hmm. that's, that's one of the reasons it makes it so difficult and uh, to get those personal aspects and also to, to prove that they actually belong to the McKinleys. Mm-hmm. The building itself is just amazing and fun. Can you kind of take us around and tell us what's going on now, what exhibits might be upstairs now? And, and then the science part is, is just so fun too. I mean, there's just a little something for everybody there. Yes. Oh, absolutely. We're kind of a one-stop shop when it comes to mm-hmm. museums. Uh, and on the second floor, that's the history floor. So that's where Kim and I spend most of our time up there. Uh, if people haven't been back in a while, they'll be surprised to see the changes in 2009 to commemorate the bicentennial for Stark County. We have a brand new exhibit, permanent exhibit called the Stark County Story. So it tells the history of the community that fostered the president. Uh, We have our McKinley Gallery, of course, with the largest collection of McKinley artifacts that you're going to see anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. And our Street of Shops, which is um, a recreated town inside the museum, which which people really, really love. Uh, And it shows how a town developed from about 1805 five or so up until the 1930s. It's and, a trip uh, back in time. It is. Mm-hmm. And we've been adding, uh, over time, we've been adding figures to the street to give it that mm-hmm. lifelike quality. Uh, and then uh, Kim can address the Keller Gallery, which is our changing space. Yes. We have an exhibit right now called Wise About Eyes, um, which is traveling through Prevent Blindness, Ohio. Mm-hmm. And it was built by the Boonshoff Museum in Dayton. And it's all interactives for kids and families about eye health and eye safety and eye diseases. So um, it, it's an educational exhibit, but it's fun, too, because the interactives are, are kind of neat for kids. And then we also have um, a lot of eyeglasses and things from local Star County and Canton op- Optometrist, optician. Sounds right. <laughs> Both. Both, probably. <laughs> awesome. Well, we are going to be back with uh, Chris and Kim Canny right after these words. You're listening to Our Community.